Hello and welcome to SE Rankings Do Follow Podcast. Here we hold regular talks with SEO and digital marketing experts to discuss how to SEO topics and share actionable insights with the SEO community. So subscribe to stay on top of everything going on in SEO. In today's episode, we're going to talk about competitive SEO research, leveraging insights for SERP dominance with international SEO expert and the founder of Brains Digital in the UK, Liraz Postan. Welcome, Liraz. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, if you don't <laughs> mind, I just want to jump straight into yeah. our conversation and uh, start off by asking you to tell us a bit more about your background, how you got into digital marketing, uh, what led you to found Brains Digital in the UK. Just tell us a bit more. So I have a funny story. I was, I think, like 15, 16 years ago, I was an actress and a singer. I was a professional singer, you know, an actor in the, in the theater and musicals. And then one day I decided that I really want to get uh, some kind of stability in my life. And I was like, okay, let's try just like being some kind of a part-time job in a high-tech industry. Just like be there for a couple of hours a day. And I fell in love. <laughs> That's the whole thing. So basically, I, I think like 15 years ago, I stepped into the first company, which was uh, 888, 888.com. Eventually, I just fell in love with SEO and content, um, and I'm, that's, that's what I'm doing until now. And with Brains Digital, well, basically, I think like in the last five years or so, I was uh, independent, working, you know, with companies and also in like in, in-house positions. Um, with, with Brains Digital, I managed to create some kind of a Brainiacs team that can work with me and, you know, bring some value to customers, to clients that are looking for um, growth expansion. So that was, uh, this is basically in it, you know, this is the story. So from a singer and actress, <laughs> I'm doing an international SEO. I was, I was not <laughs> expecting to hear that at all. This is a unique story. I've not heard this because everybody just some somehow usually starts with either content or they wanted to develop a website. So a lot of the experts that we did talk to have uh, have a relationship to it. And, and uh, so I'm just blown away <laughs> that you that you just decided to change your career. Entire like, career. If you don't mind, I want to just jump a bit deeper into specifically competitive research because I realize you take care of a lot of different things. I, uh, I've yes. looked at your website and you have a lot of different services. So you basically offer the entire uh, spectrum of the package just to mm-hmm. take a- any company's business uh, pellet uh, in the d- digital sphere. I want to talk about specifically about competitive research. So how would you define it and why would you um, say it is crucial for businesses that aim to dominate the SERPs with all the competitors in there? Well, sometimes, you know, competitors are one thing that a client thinks they are competitive, you know, and sometimes we find a completely set, a new set of uh, competitors because your direct competition or sometimes in specific niches doesn't, they're not doing SEO or content marketing. They're not investing in it. So your competitors on on what's happening on the SERP, which is a completely different story. So this is why you have to understand the bigger picture. You have to understand the benchmark within the industry and outside of the industry to understand if in a specific industry you have different uh, competitors that are affiliate or publishers or this kind of, uh, you know, not even your direct competition. So this is crucial to begin with, I I would say, like the gap analysis and understand where you at in terms of business. You can't really start an SEO process or even content marketing process without understanding your competition. So this is very, very much crucial and this is, has to be done. You know, sometimes clients uh, or, you know, companies doesn't have a proper uh, competitive uh, research. They don't invest in this too much. So that's something that I, I truly feel that uh, should be changed. How do you start? What is the first thing that you do when you want to analyze your clients' competitors or your own competitors? What is the first thing that you look at? Do you, uh, do you try to understand... Are they about the same thing that you're promoting or are they, for example, a listicle of top SEO tools, for example, that it's on the SERP? It's not Mm -hmm. directly competing with you. I mean, it it is competing with you, but it's not topically the same. So how would you even define who you're going up against? And what is the first thing that you look at to even understand who the competitors are? So basically, to, to begin with, I start by asking the client, who are your competitors? Sometimes I will get, you know, uh, three, five competitors that they think are their competitive. Uh, I would say they are uh, positioning themselves with the same, I don't know, the same set of tools, the same offering, the same product, or, you know, just like really, really similar services. But then we get this list from them. We have a look at these competitors' um, websites. They have a look what they're offering. We're analyzing them. But then we 
do our own research. Who is dominating the SERP with the same keywords, the same topics, the same, uh, I don't know, like some kind of a maybe positioning. So we kind of just try to mix, I would say, between the client's thinking or the client's knowing the industry better than us at this point. And, you know, just like combining the SERP and combining their um, their point of view in terms of industry. And this is very, you know, sometimes we get like very, I would say in some industries, which are more, uh, I would say, construction or packaging or things like that. Some industries are not really investing too much with uh, content or SEO. So direct competition isn't much of a help for us to learn from. We cannot really learn from what they're doing because they're not doing anything. They're just there for so many years, so the industry really knows them and love them, but it's not enough for us to understand what to tackle in SEO and how to beat this client, you know, rather than just to be there, you know, just to be present. But yeah, reputation is also something that we we need to check all the time. Um, like you said, you listen to what your uh, clients are saying, what their competitors are, you look at the SERP, you analyze mm-hmm. it for But do you, uh, I mean, I, I know that the answer in SEO is it depends almost all the time, but is there like a rule that you focus on an immediate competitor? For example, I ranking on position 92 and you're looking at position 91 just so that we can beat that one and then beat the next one. Or do you look at number one and see how you can go all the way to the top? Is there like a gradual period that you go through or do you focus on the big picture or on the small goals that can take you just yeah, if exactly you talk on that? We're looking at it more holistically wise, understanding the bigger picture of all the competitors, the leading competitors. Are they investing in, with the content? Are they investing with their technical even implementation? How their website they were looking? What's their positioning? Looking at the overall picture. How much backlinks do they have? Are they doing active PR? How their navigation looks like and things like that. Um, and then we come up with some insights. I think competitors will... Like we're doing the research now and two weeks now, they're going to be like a Google dance and, you know, everything is going to be changing a little bit in SERP. So we're looking at the top ones and we want to learn from all of them in a more holistic approach, I would say, and not thinking, yeah, I want to beat this specific competitor because competitors can change, you know, in terms of rankings. So we're looking at it and we're building, I would say, like a more of a, a planning that can just beat the entire competition, you know, just to go down, uh, bring them a little bit more down and SERP, that will be more holistically and not uh, specifically for uh, pair competitors. Will just happen, you know, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering what kind of tools help you out in this? Oh, wow. I'm um, I'm a freak of tools, really. I'm using so many tools um, to even just work on some clients because I believe that every tool has their own capability, their own set of, you know, excellence. Um, and basically, I love to get so many insights from different tools. So to begin with, I'm a power user for SRanking. Ranking. Uh, my whole team is using SRanking. Ranking. We use it on a daily basis. We're using it as a dashboard. We're using it for a client dashboard. We're using it for everything. So to begin with, they're doing the initial search with SRanking. Ranking. And then we're going to similar web event to c- come up with some, you know, beyond SEO. Like what's their tactic for email marketing? What's their tactic for, you know, any kind of thing that can really interesting for us? Uh, even some ads that can be interesting for us to understand what's now going on, what they're trying to advertise, what they're trying to push. Sometimes in rankings, you don't really see that as an SEO effort. You see it in just like in PPC. So we're trying to look at the different, like uh, the bigger picture via similar, similar web. We're using, I would say, Keyword Insights. It's one of the tools that I really, really love using. And the new addition to the team, um, basically when we're doing competitors research for commerce, uh, commerce side. So we're using Koala. Koala apps is one of the things that can give you insights of, you know, what are the best uh, products? What are the best, uh, you know, if they're changing a little bit, the pricing for the products or things like that inside the, store, the Shopify stores or WooCommerce. So that only, that's another thing that we started using for analyzing, you know, commerce sites as well, competitors research. We're using tons. <laughs> but can you go into like, uh, do you analyze websites from a technical perspective as well, competitors? Do you like, use like Screaming Frog and stuff like that? Not in the beginning. Not in the beginning. In the beginning, we do like some kind of uh, an audit to understand what's the positioning, how much content they produce on what topics, the gap analysis, understanding what keywords that they're trying to push, what topics in general they're trying to push, um, their overall strategy, what's bringing them traffic, you know? Is it, uh, is it social they're heavy on this or they're like uh, a lot of direct traffic, affiliates traffic, referrals traffic, whatever, PR. So we're trying to have the bigger picture 
And then um, technical part is the very, very, very much. And, you know, like the very last part, because, you know, technical is always going to be like every site has its own issues, I would say. But um, in, inside the competitors research, we try to analyze what's going on in these sites. We're trying like marketing strategy, I would say. This is what we're trying to do. Yeah. And once you understand who you're going up against, who your clients are going up against, how do you understand what to prioritize when you when you make a decision like, okay, first I'm going to do this. How do you come make that decision once you have all the different metrics using all the tools? So that's a good question. I think that uh, we have uh, first uh, like um, like the main table, I would say that we are drawing everything like there, every kind of information that we have, it's there. So in terms of backlinks amount, domain referring, amount of traffic we see that they're getting from different kinds of channels and things like that. But then we're starting to create a plan according to what's more crucial. If we see that this website that we're trying to, you know, uh, work with, uh, it's just uh, like a very young startup. They don't have any, like any kind of, you know, rank keywords or any kind of content. They don't have even, you know, backlinks or any kind of PR mentions or things like that. We start from there. That's the very, very, very much basic. I believe that, you know, a client, like I would say like client sites that it does not have any kind of content or you're just a half homepage or product page and, you know, some FAQ pages, they need more content to rank. So we start from there. Content is like the very first thing that I would do to close that gap. And, you know, to close that gap, we're creating the content plan and to understand, and the kind of, of course, the content briefs and to understand what topics, what, what things that we want to write about. So we're very much starting from there. So what's crucial for the, I would say, we're analyzing the gap. What's the most have, like, I would say, like the huge gap um, that we want to test. We're going to start from there. And then, you know, backlinks the same, keywords and all of these kind of things. So this is like uh, also. And of course, PR, if that's like a startup that no one's really knows, or, you know, sometimes they have like really good presence of PR, but the PR is not really optimized for SEO. So we're going to start from there. We're going to instruct the teams of how to do a proper, you know, digital PR to complement the SEO. So all these type of things, it's really, it depends. No, but it's like, you know, this is basically the answer. (laughs) I wanted to ask about your level of excitement uh, in terms of working with websites that are rather new or Mm -hmm. ones that have already been around for a couple of years. And then now they're turning to you like, Okay, we built this house. Help us rebuild it. Which which option do you prefer? Which one is more exciting for you? Wow, I think like there are two level of excitements. What one is like um, if the startup is like uh, is very much new, and you can help them grow, and you know eventually they will follow up your suggestions and follow up, of course, with your recommendations that you're giving them, and you're gonna see the graph grows. So that's amazing, right? But another challenging uh, point of view is when you have like a really grown, I would say, company that comes to us and say, listen, like we're producing 12 pieces of content every month to a blog and it doesn't bring anything to us. And then you kind of change the strategy, tweak it a little bit, boom, it's up. So we're always excited, I would say. Like every time we see something up, we're excited, right? So it doesn't really matter. We just want to see the results. Like the end result, the client wants to be happy and uh, this is our happiness as well. So um, yeah, usually this is what happens, you know, with uh, some kind of... um, grown companies are creating a lot of work content but uh not with the right strategy and thinking you know maybe an seo of 10 years old uh tactics and things like that density and all these type of things that are coming up with uh you know uh clients um i would say discovery call so it's not that anymore so we have to switch around the the strategy and help them to tweak it so this is where we at yeah if you have a, like a case, um, maybe a situation that happened uh, in your experience or your career that you that like insights you found competitor insights that have helped a lot the client, is there some specific example that you're not proud of but like happy to share with us? That- oh yeah, by the way, it's related to competitors' research, so I can uh, even ask that, or even uh, reply to that. So basically, I had a client I think like four years ago now or three years ago. That basically we had um, some kind of um, a vision that they want to X a 30 or things like that they, until the end of the year. So I looked around in the competition. The competition had massive traffic. And, you know, in the end of the day, you're looking at the website. The blog looks very normal. They don't have any on much content hubs. So I dug around and I found that their their competitors are using a tactic for subdomains to create a programmatic SEO, this kind of a thing thousands of, <laughs> I think it was like thousands of subdomains that they were creating just for the purpose of PPC, 
and it got picked up by SEO and, you know, just like a landing page that, you know, was built from there. So we took this tactic, but I, I just like, I, I just made it better, you know, instead of using subdomains and just the subfolders of the website and made the website grow <laughs> X100 until the end of the year, because we created so many pages on the same strategy, but just under the subfolder of the, of the website. So the website grew with thousands of pages, really relevant pages that are supposed to be bring also since sales. And, you know, eventually this was the main strategy of the company. But I always tell this story because, you know, at the end of the day, they had enough resources to just fire me as a consultant and hire three SEOs instead of me internally. So <laughs> this is the whole story that, you know, the company grew, the company just exploded. It's I love the, stories uh, like this. It just <laughs> it just shows how, how SEO is like a, an art. That you can basically use whatever insight you have. Well, not not all oh, whatever, but it's up to you. You can make anything happen. And I'm just excited about all the different stories that people have, like subdomains. I was not expecting that to be in the answer. I can imagine that. Yeah, thank you for this. And, and uh, I have a question about risks that are associated with um, doing competitive research. So you look at what are your competitors doing? And how do you stay uh, true to yourself? Uh, while at the same time always looking at what your competitors are doing, how do you make yourself unique and not lose sight of yeah of your own unique uh, value proposition? Well, I think like companies are very much uh, some companies. I, I wouldn't say all of them, but like some companies are very much know what their value proposition is, and sometimes they don't want to move you know from this. For example, if we're going to see the the entire um, SERP is being controlled or dominating by a commerce shop. But you're you're not a commerce. You're basically going to get a quote from us. You're not really want them to buy from you. You're not a commerce. So the client, if it's not interesting for the client, if the client is not interested with just like one off shoppers, they want the bigger sharks. They want the bigger companies to buy from them and get a proper quote for you know bigger quantities. So they stick with it because this is their target audience. So this is basically where we try to. Um, outsmart a competition in terms of content marketing or the techni- like technical things that are happening on their website. So it's okay to, to understand that the SERP is um, dominating by, this, by, I would say, more of a one type of players. But if the company doesn't feel that this strategy will play for them, they don't want that because it will not complement their uh, sales and will just create a lot of noise for them. So it's fine. We just need to find like another you know, another strategy to tackle this and to win the SERP. It's really okay. I prefer to go with the business whether with uh, with what I see on SERPs because sometimes we know that SERPs is dominating by one type of players, but if it's not complementing the sales team or, you know, the business, so it's not going to work, you know, in the long run. So let's find another way. Let's find another way to go into the SERP when, when we know it's a little bit more challenging, but, you know, we can do that. It's perfectly fine. Thinking about like the evolutionary road that a Serenka, for example, has gone through, like we changed our approach because first of all, we're just targeting the wider market. Mm-hmm. Then we said like, okay, the wider market, we're not getting the right results that we wanted. Let's focus on specific groups. We mm-hmm. started focusing on specific groups. Now we're getting results. And now we're, even our homepage has a different message. Like the initial exactly. message. So this change just happens because we just always keep like, keep track of all the data and just always look at, if, is it working for us? What do we need to change? I also wanted to add, like uh, some, some, I think like startups in the beginning of the, their way, they pivot, they, they do all the time these uh, changes. Um, and these, I would say, where SEO is very, very smart is with the flexibility, right? Like you cannot really say, oh, no, no, this is what we need to do. This is what we need to do. You have to shift with your client, with your business all the time and come up with different suggestions and come up with different initiatives because the surface changes because the digital, digital marketing is like changed all the time. And even AI now is coming to the picture like like one year from now, like I would say we're going to be in a different space, right? So you have to keep going with other suggestions and just to be flexible. You cannot really just like uh, stay with your own, you know, we need to do that with SEO. That's about being professional, I would say, in the space. In terms of the content strategy, uh, how much do you look at competitors in terms of forming your own strategy? So we always look at competitors. We even monitor them. Okay. We even monitor their pages for changes. Uh, you can crawl your competitors. <laughs> you can actually do that. You can open a project and just crawl them for their changes. What they're changing, what they're doing. Is it H1? Is there a method? And then you can follow their strategy because they can write a blog post and, you know, on a topic. 
that's really great. Like everyone is doing that. But what are they now trying to improve? They're trying to improve something with their rankings, right? So what are they trying to push? So you can monitor them. So that's really interesting to look. Um, you can have an automation for that. Like I heard like a really nice SEO guy that I'm following that uh, he was doing like some kind of uh, every time that their XML uh, sitemap was changing, was getting like, you know, like a new page. He was getting like a push from Zapier. It was like, hey, a new page was added to the XML map. So I think that's really nice also to monitor your competitors, but also in terms of to understand a little bit their topics that they're trying to push, like new topics, have a look at it in terms of clustering. Okay, it's not just one topic. What's the whole cluster they're trying to push now? Um, and then you can come up with some some things, by the way, with the industry that are, I don't know, like 10 searches now, you know, like, uh, so they will grow bigger and bigger and bigger because it's just like coined in the industry right now. So that's a tactic that uh, I'm really, really trying to follow. But sometimes you have to just close the gap. You just like need to narrow down the gap that you're seeing with your other competitors that already written about this, what is versus, you know, all these type of comparison pages that you have to get inside your blog to gain this entity talking about a specific topic. And then, you know, when you're grown enough, you can you can take the smaller ones that are really, really, really now, I would say, um, that you see now that they're really, really trying to to rank for. So it's a matter of priority all the time. But yeah, it's really interesting. It's a whole new world, you know? What do you think about writing very comprehensive articles, 10,000 words long, or breaking that article down into five articles that talk about specific aspects of this big topic and just trying to rank those five articles separately? Because we, we've tried out both things and now we are updating our previous articles and breaking them down into two articles or three articles even. So what I really love doing is combining both strategies. I would say we have going to have like a really long format article that covers everything, but not goes as deep dive as the shorter ones will, I would say. So just for one specific topic. So one bigger of uh, an article will cover them and then link to each one of the shorter ones, uh, the shorter versions. In the shorter versions, I would try to do a deep dive towards them and be more value, give more value, you know? So it can be like, I would say, more of a, any kind of that can bring me some kind of, I would say, a video or even a visual, an infographic or things like that. This is something that I would go for 100%. This like just combining the both strategy really works. Appreciate your answer. And um, I have a question about search engines, algorithm changes. It's always happening. You've all touched on this a bit. But do you have like an approach that helps you just stay on top and not be uh, weathered by the storm that is created by Google every couple of weeks? So I think the only time when we see that the competitor's research isn't, isn't really much relevant, and I haven't seen that like for many years, um, is that when the SERP is completely changing. The SERP is completely changing for one specific keyword or a specific cluster. And sometimes we see that, for example, we see that Google sometimes is changing it from intent of information to commercial intent. And we see that. We see that lately, by the way, with all the recent updates, we see some some of the keywords that we're working on are completely changing. And then we see a whole new set of competitors on SERP. But we don't get some kind of, I would say, if the strategy is solid and you know what you're doing and you're not trying to fool anyone, right? You're not trying to do like, I don't know, weird hacks or weird kind of a thing going on. You're just trying to deliver like helpful content, really generally helpful content to the users. So your strategy will stick. It's just a matter of, you know, for me, it's just a matter of uh, if the CTR will not be hurt because of the SERP uh, intent changes or anything like that. But it, eventually your strategy is supposed to be very, very much solid. That can be in a way flexible to do some changes as well. But it should not be hurt by any kind of Google algorithm updates, um, I don't know, slammed by it. Uh, what we see usually with, um, with Google updates is that the sites are, you know, YMYL sites that are not using enough authority or enough, I don't know, experts or, you know, writing for them or things or not. They're using it, but they're not emphasizing it. That can be like a thing. But usually if it's a SaaS or, you know, software services site that is really solid and, you know, it's a well-known, I would say, and the market is like, a, it's very, it gained the authority that it has already. It will not get hurt, like, uh, dramatically. We'll, we won't see these kind of a thing. So, knock on wood, yeah? But yeah, we don't see that happening. <laughs> what if, uh, like, a new feature rolls out? Well, if Google talks about something, do you wait for it to show sort of, 
settle in and then you see how your site reacted to the update or do you just jump on it straight away and see like how we need to do this for our biggest client just to make sure that they are not falling behind just this is a new opportunity just let's do it before the competitors well if there's a kind of a new schema rolled out like any kind of this thing we're going to try it immediately we're going to try it immediately everything that we can um to help you know the SERP understanding how the page look like or what is on the page we're going to try that immediately, but we do know that, you know, some schema features, you know, are getting demoted because of the massive use <laughs> uh, for SEO for this kind of a thing. For example, let's take like the FAQ schema markup that everyone used that you know, <laughs> to add more content and now it's basically being demoted. So we're trying to be like early adopters, I would say, for any kind of, you know, earning a better CTR. Um, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's like Google DE is not responding to it and Google CO UK is not responding to it, but Google.com does respond to it. So it really like, because we're doing so many languages and so many countries that we're targeting, not every Google is basically behaving the same. Have you tried uh, any AI tools just to see whether they can do the stuff that you're doing to, or just yeah. have an expectation towards what the, where AI competitive research is going to go? Could you elaborate on this, please? Oh, well, yeah. We're using AI to uh, scale our process, um, not to replace it. That is very, very, very much crucial. So we're basically going to use AI tools to help us uh, understanding a little bit where the gap lays, uh, what's their positioning. Um, we're going to use, I don't know, we're, we're even writing the content briefs for us. We're doing that, you know, and just like fixing it with the human editing. So we're doing all these kind of, uh, there's tons of tools now today. And by the way, I also started creating like, um, I would say, AI uh, video uh, editing or things like that or for, you know, content marketing to make it easier. If you want to have like this blog post presented in a video format and to make it a little bit more digestible for clients, for, you know, readers. So that's another way for you to to use AI today that can be very, very much easy. I was thinking more of uh, AI can specifically help with competitive research because I've been seeing articles like, how to use AI to fix the technical issues on your website. And I'm like thinking like I've tried, I've been using these these programs and they can't even use the most popular keyword no. mm -hmm. that when I ask it to. Have you been looking into it? And just, just you know, this, so that you are aware of what the situation is so that it doesn't come from behind unexpectedly, you know? So I think AI today for competitors research is not really up to date. That's the most thing that I uh, have to say about that. We're using that for a more general uh, point of view. For example, I don't know, like specific um, um, point of view, like services or offering. Sometimes it doesn't have a lot of changes, but it's not up to date. So it's not the current, you know, they don't like the database is not really up to date to uh, this specific moment. So this is one thing for us that um, that I think we're not using ChatGPT or this kind of a thing for you know uh, competitive research at the moment. We're using the most, I would say, force our eyes, but mostly you know tools that I've mentioned before, just because of database thing, just because we don't trust, I would say, up to date changes that we're seeing at today looking at the website. Uh, but I'm sure it's going to be like a matter of time, you know, so it's going to be like this. Yeah. And uh, I think we're good on the questions. I really appreciate your insights. I don't, don't want to go into SG because I wanted to come back for uh, another conversation once SG rolls out. Then that way oh. we can talk about how businesses can benefit from that or mm -hmm. vice versa. And uh, the last question I have, one piece of advice that you have for people just starting out well, SEO or those that have been doing competitive research for a while, but you have uh, like something that you think would help professionals that are engaged in the competitive intelligence gathering? Well, I think like it's it's a matter of just understanding that you have to do that every kind of uh, quarterly, just research quarterly. Just look, sometimes the SERP is changing daily, uh, depending on what niche are you in or what topic are you in. Just use your own eyes at the beginning. Just use your own eyes, understand how, what the website looks like, what are the positioning, their navigation looks like, what they're trying to really push in their value proposition. Um, and then start, you know, looking at other tools and going in, analyzing the gaps and what traffic sources that they have, how many years are they in, they've been in the industry, do they have PR mentions, go through that. But really what I'm seeing mostly with SEOs today is not looking at all with their eyes. They're not looking, they're just using SEO tools. And not, that's not right. You know, this is this is why we're human. At least uh, we need to look with our own eyes at the SERP, what's really happening on the SERP. 
You know, sometimes uh, like a competitor can rank number one, but it's really pushed down below the fold. It's not really doesn't make any sense even to reason rank for this because it's very much competitive. So all the ads are pushing them, all the features are pushing them. And, you know, on the product in like Google products, everything is basically there. So what position one will bring me? Basically nothing. So have a look at the SERP and, you know, just start from there and always remember that that's fluidic. It can change any day. So be on top of it. All right. And there you have it, folks, straight from the expert. So I want to sign off by saying that today, Liraz Postan shared with us her insights and expertise on leveraging competitive insights to dominate the SERPs. Hope our listeners are already thinking about how to apply these insights to their work. Once again, I want to thank you, Liraz, for being here with us and sharing all this info. And to our listeners, I want to invite you to subscribe and join the next episode of the Do Follow podcast.